Hello, my sana sana ami. This is Auntie Pumeza again. And uh, we are going to start with our lessons today. Uh, but before we start, I just want us to discuss what you need to know about maths, okay? Firstly, maths is a language, okay, guys? Maths is a language, like any other language. It, it needs to be translated from one language to another. So when actually you're studying maths, you're translating from maths to English or whatever language you are using. For example, I'm Tosa, so I might be translating Tosa to maths or maths to Tosa. If you're English or French or Zulu or Sotho, Whichever language you are doing, just know that math is one of the languages that you have to speak. And like any other language, you can master it. You can master it. The second thing you need to know about math is that it has rules. Guys, like any other language, math has rules. Remember, in English or any other language, you cannot just put adjectives or verbs wherever you are, they, wherever you want. There, there are rules where you're supposed to put your adjectives, what you are supposed to do with what. So with maths as well, there are rules. And this is actually where you are failing your maths. This is where you're not understanding why you fail your maths. You are not following the rules. Or you are mixing up the rules. You cannot put the rules for adjectives into verbs. Same in maths. You cannot put rules for other things in the other things. So you need to know when and where to apply the rules. The third thing you need to know about maths is that it is a tool to solve real life problems. I've had a lot of students saying that why are we doing maths? We are not even gonna need it. No, maths, you, you actually do maths every day. When you wake up, the decisions you make are actually maths problems. You are solving maths problems. Let's take a simple example. You have a 20 rand in your pocket. So you have a 20 rand in your pocket. You want to go and buy a chocolate. Let's say you know the price of the chocolate. So the price, you know it. And then you want to ask yourself, how much change am I gonna get if, if I, I spend my 20 rand? So you have your change here. That's a math problem you're already solving there. So you know the price is 12 rand. You don't know the change. This is what you're asking. So we're gonna name it X. You know how much you have, how much you want to, how, the total amount you have. So that is the, your, your sum. So that's a math problem over there. You're actually solving for X. For those who didn't know why you're solving for X at school, this is the reason. It's because you're doing math every day. Every day of your life, when you wake up, you actually do math. So we're gonna have fun with this. We're gonna show you how you apply your math in your, in your real life problems. Okay. So the fourth thing you need to know about maths is that it sharpens your reasoning skills. It sharpens your reasoning skills. That's why you want to be asked straightforward questions with maths. They will look complicated, but don't worry, Auntie Pumeza is gonna teach you all the tricks on how to solve those problems that look so complicated. It is because real life is not simple. It does, it's not one dimensional, it's complex. So they are training you to reason how to solve those complex problems. So it's very important that you actually um, know how to solve. So get along with math because it's gonna sharpen your reasoning skills. The last thing I want you to know about maths, guys, it is the easiest, easiest subject you can ever find on planet Earth. I know some of you are laughing at me right now because you think I'm lying. I'm not. By the end of these lessons, you will agree with me that maths is the easiest subject of all. So I hope you guys are ready. Let's get rolling. Okay, so our lesson one is about handling maths operations. Okay? These are your maths operations. We are gonna learn how to handle them. Because guys, let me tell you this, 90% of the time, the reason you fail maths is because you cannot handle these. You do not fail maths because you do not understand grade 12 work or grade 11 work or grade nine work. It's because you cannot handle these. So we are just gonna, for the first lesson, this lesson and the next one, we are just gonna spend more time on the foundation. 
those things you learned in your foundation phase or primary school these are the things that you when you got into high school you teach them out you forgot them but you need them they're the foundation of everything that you're ever going to do in maths so we are going to look at these and the rules that apply to them remember i said maths is about rules so we are going to do these and and see what rules apply to each okay so i call these ones twins and these ones twins there are two reasons why i call these twins okay the first reason is that most of the rules that apply in addition they also apply in subtraction most of the rules that apply in addition they also apply in subtraction same here most of the rules that apply in multiplication they apply in division sorry they apply in division most of the rules that apply in multiplication they apply in division that's very important i said most guys not all because you're gonna see in some cases the rules do not uh, they don't have the same rules but it's, it's those few cases most of the time the rules that apply here also apply here same here same here and they are far apart okay they are distant cousins so the rules that apply in this block don't usually apply in this block this is where you are messing it up because you just remember one set of rules and you apply everywhere these they apply here but they do not apply here so this is what you're going to look in this lesson which rules apply in addition and subtraction and which rules apply in multiplication and division okay so let's start with the rules that apply in addition and subtraction okay the rule is that if you have both numbers positive so let, let's take two numbers we're adding or subtracting two numbers the first rule is that if both numbers are positive if both numbers are positive then you continue and add the same way you were taught in grade one or grade two wherever you started learning how to add so you just do um you you, you go and and you just add the same way you were taught which is you're gonna get a five but what happens now when you have two negative numbers you're adding two negative numbers okay that's where you, you, you start to mess up. When you have two negative numbers, you do not subtract. You add. So it is going to be two and three, it's five. But the important point, you take the sign along. You take the sign along. So it's going to be a negative five, not a five. It's going to be a negative five. So you add and take a sign along. This is where you mess up. Some of the students, you subtract because you think this is a negative, so you're supposed to subtract. Some of you, you do remember that you're supposed to add because the signs are the same. But then you forget the sign. You forget to take the sign along. And that is the problem. And most of you get angry because you're supposed to give a, a minus five as an answer and you gave a five and you think your, your teachers, when they mark you wrong, they are mean. No, it's because these two numbers are interpreted different. Remember I said maths solve everyday life problems. So when you interpret those numbers, let's say you're giving them to your boss, your boss will interpret those numbers differently. Let's make a very practical example. Recently you had a story um, where a student at university was paid 14 million by NSFIRS. That is 14 million, guys. That student was supposed to be paid 1,400. What happened? Someone just continued to press a lot of zeros and then the system paid that student 14 million instead of 1,400. So you see, you can say these numbers are the same, or you know, it's just the zeros, you know? It's not just the zeros, they mean two different numbers. These are two different numbers. Same as here, they may look similar, but these numbers are very different. Five and a minus five are totally totally different numbers they are interpreted differently so that's so important that you treat your signs carefully actually in maths signs are more important than numbers signs are more important than numbers because they mean two different things so another thing where you can use in is in your gps the people that um designed your gps they used sign let's say positive means going north can you just erase this so let's say positive means north and negative means south. 
So let's say someone who was designing that GPS forgot to put a negative. You say it's just nothing, they just forgot. So you are meant to go south of Johannesburg, but because that person forgot, the GPS lands in Pretoria. Just imagine how much you'll be upset if you do that. So that's, what is important, that's why it's important to treat these um, signs uh, carefully because you are going to apply them in real life. And in real life, there could be dire consequences. So I hope now you understand why, why signs in math are so important. Okay, let's quickly move to when the signs are not the same. So we have dealt with when the signs are the same. We said even if they're positive or negative, you add, but you take the sign along. So if both are positive, you take the sign, so the answer will be positive. But if both are negative, then you, you take the sign along. So your answer will be negative, but you're adding. But what happens when the signs are not the same? So you have these two scenarios here. Both of them, the signs are not the same. The rule is that you separate. It doesn't matter which number has which sign. The rule is that you must just separate. Okay? Just separate. That will be 3 minus 2, which is 1. But then you must take the sign of the bigger number. So your answer must carry the sign of the bigger number. So here, the bigger number is 3. It has a minus sign. So your answer will be negative. Okay? Because the bigger number is negative. So your answer will always be negative. Here, you, you subtract because the signs are not the same. You subtract and then uh, you take the sign. So it's going to be 1. What is the sign of the bigger number? It's positive. The bigger number is 3. The sign is positive. So what do you do here? You take the sign. Remember, we don't write when it's a positive sign. So we leave it like that. So although these numbers look similar, but because they have different signs, the answer will be different. You have a negative and a positive. So that's what is important, guys. Please keep this. It may look like for now, it is just so trivial but it's important it is the reason you are failing guys i've been doing this for more than 10 years i've been tutoring for more than 10 years and i know 90 percent of the students they fail maths because of this so it's very important that you familiarize yourself with this master it make sure you go over it and over it until you master it when you're doing your homeworks go over this lesson and i bet you you're going to master maths from here onwards Okay, let's quickly move now to the rules for multiplication and division. The rules for multiplication and division. They're different. Remember I said, guys, these are distant cousins, okay? They have different rules. What applies here does not apply here. Most of you, you just mix. If you master these rules, you forget these ones. You also apply these rules here, and you are wrong. So let's look at the at multiplication and division okay sorry multiplication and division okay so what happens here you just look whether the signs are the same or they're not the same the rule with multiplication and also with division says that if the signs are the same the answer will always be positive. It doesn't matter if the signs were negative or positive, but your answer will always be positive. Your answer will always be positive. So we get a positive here. The signs are the same. Even here, although they were both negative, you get the answer will always be positive. Okay? Remember when we're doing addition. Let's just erase here. Remember when we're doing addition, the signs were the same. We said you add and take the sign along. So that would be minus 5. What most of you do is you apply this rule here. So because the signs are both negative, you take that along. You multiply and then you take that along and you make this negative. That's where you are getting it wrong. That's why I was saying treat these rules differently. The different rules for, for this and different rules for that one. Okay, so treat them differently 
and then um, you will be fine. You will be fine. So remember that these are not when you're adding or subtracting. It's different when you're multiplying. Okay. So when the signs, this applies also when you are dividing. Okay. This applies also when you are dividing. The rule is the same. The rule is the same. And then what happens when the signs are not the same? When the signs are not the same, it doesn't matter where, which number has which sign, it doesn't matter. When you're multiplying or dividing, the rule is that you always get a negative. You will always get a negative. The moment two, you are, you're multiplying two numbers and the signs are not the same, you're actually going to get a negative. Okay, this applies as well to division. This applies as well to division. I've, I've made um, some examples there. Let's quickly go to them. Let's quickly go to those examples. So the first example is two times three. You have two times three. These ones are both positive, so you'll get a six. But the next one, let's see the next one, it's minus 2 times minus 2, sorry, minus 3. Here you have both negative, but the rule says as long as you're multiplying or dividing and the, and the signs are the same, you will always get a positive answer. So you get a positive here. So here you will get the same answer, whether they were negative or positive, as long as they are the same. Remember with the plus, you got, if it was you got two different answers. It was when you add, when, when both were plus, you got a five. But when both were negative, you got a minus five. Why? Because you, the rule for addition is that you must take the sign along. But for here, you don't take the sign along. As long as the signs are the same, you get positive. Okay? So just not make note of that. With the division as well, you can just say 12 divided by 4 is 3. The, the signs are the same, they are both positive. But even if you have this, they have a negative and a negative. The signs are the same, you also get, you still get the same answer. Okay, so I hope you guys understand this. Please, it is very, very important. We are actually going to keep on reminding each other as we go along because we are going to apply whatever we do in maths, we're actually going to be applying this. So I'll keep on reminding you where you apply these rules so that they don't, you don't have to memorize them. All the rules we are going to learn in maths, you don't memorize them. What you do is you keep practicing. The more you do them, I always liken maths to cooking. When, when your parents teach you how to cook, you don't um, memorize the rules. You don't memorize the rules. What you do is that the more you cook, the more you remember. The more you remember that, okay, you first start with the peeling before you do whatever, or you start by washing the veggies because, before you can peel them. So you don't memorize that. But the more you do it, it, it becomes natural. Same as with maths. The more you do, the more you practice these, you're going to be applying them every time you do maths. The more you do maths, the more they become natural. So you will just know them. Okay? Finally, don't forget your board mass. Board mass is very important. It is the rule on how you should solve your problems. Remember I said in maths, you're going to solve complex problems. So you won't be given 2 plus 2, just like that. You'll be given a plus, a times, a divide in one problem. So you need a rule on how you should uh, solve those problems. So board mass comes in very handy. Let me just remind you what board mass is. B stands for brackets. So whenever you see brackets, you start with them. Okay? You start with them. Let's say, for example, you are given 2 plus 3 divided by 5 minus 8. So these, these are your um, set of problems that you might get. So what you do, whenever you see brackets, you start with them. So B stands for brackets. You must start with the brackets. And then next, next is O, which stands for orders. I know that in your primary school, wherever, you were told that O stands for off. They were not wrong, but there's, a, there's more power to that. Um, o stands for orders. Okay, what are orders? 
it's 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 things with powers or roots all your roots and all your powers so they must come second so whenever you're solving and you see um, a power or a root you you do that second if they they are brackets you do brackets first and then you do your powers or your your roots and then division and multiplication these two division and multiplication they're in the same level they're in the same level in that you start with the one that is on your left so if you see them in one for example if you have two times three divided by four or two divided by three times four you have these two so you always start with the one on the left so in this one you will start with the multiplication because it's in the left on the left side but here you will start with the division because it's one on the left although you have the same numbers but you will probably get different answers because of this rule start with the one on the left and then you continue start with the one on the left always start with the one on the left they are in the same level same as with addition and subtraction they are also in the same level so when you have addition 2 plus 3 minus 4 or 2 minus 3 plus 4 so they're in the same level you start with the one on the left you always start with the one on the left actually we can quickly do this one so it's going to be 2 plus 3 which is 5 minus 4 which is 1 uh, 2 minus 3 remember the rules it's a plus and a minus we take the sign of a bigger number so we subtract so it's a 1 but we take the sign so it's going to be minus 1 plus 4 which is going to be 3 do you see that you get different answers but they are the same numbers but because of where these are positioned you actually get different answers so remember this board mass is very important we are going to apply it every time we solve problems we are going to apply board mass if you didn't apply board mass for example here you treated it as like this you will get a wrong answer and you wonder why because you you separated and you added but because you did not apply the the, the right rules you get the wrong answer okay guys sharp